So here we are, down to four. When you're this close, the imagination can run away from you. Dreams of bowling in that final show. Heck, even skipping right ahead to holding the trophy at the end. For the win! He's got it! Tracer wins it! The champions know. The only role that matters is the next one. And another strike. There we go! Yeah! Keep it going! Yes! He did it, Jason! It. It's not about getting lost in the what-ifs. It's about being the best in that moment. On that day. No distractions. No slip-ups. He got it! Just one great game. You got it! The 2022 Kia PBA Playoff Semifinal starts now on Fox. of two consecutive Sundays where we are live on Bart Simpson Fox from Bolero here in Jupiter, Florida. Next week, it's the finals. Today, we're going to pair this field of four down to two. Match number two has the Hall of Famer, Tommy Jones, clashing with A.J. Johnson. But we begin with your five seed, Chris Prather against Kyle Troop. Glad you're here with us. I'm Rob Stone. He's the Hall of Famer, Randy Peterson. First off, happy Mother's Day to all the bowling bombs out there. Is there, yeah, bowling mom, ham bone mom is back yeah, yeah, there, right yeah. over, right over that shoulder right there. There's my, and queen, our queen. Happy Mother's Day to Kimberly Pressler as well. We're gonna hear from Kimberly yeah. in a moment. Let's start though with our opening match. Kyle Troop, last year, player of the year. Won't be able to defend that title, but he has put himself in great position to defend this belt as PBA playoff winner with maybe his best stretch of bowling we've seen this season. Absolutely his best stretch. And you know, think about what Kyle did last season, Rob, where he made just south of a half a million dollars, but this season's been a struggle. But he's fought through it. This is by far his best event of the season. And guess what? By defending his title here in Jupiter and po pocketing $100,000, he'll save his season. So Kyle Troop, 4-0 through the course of this playoffs. So too his opponent today, Chris Prather, who has maybe interjected himself. We'll have more on that one into the player of the year race. I'll tell you what, Chris Prather, in my opinion, is the most technically sound player on the PBA Tour. And you know what's interesting, Rob? When the pros watch other players, they watch Chris Prather. And this guy knows how to win the big money events. He won another major this season for $100,000. And he was the inaugural winner of this event back in 2019. Oh, you talk about the pros watching this guy. One of the best to ever throw it down lane. Mr. Bo Burton, living right yeah. around this neck of the woods, yeah. chiming in. But boy, I really like to watch Chris Prather. Just yeah. take a look at the odds, courtesy of our partner at Fox Bet right now. Match number one, Kyle Troop is a favorite. How about Johnson versus Jones seen as a push? And, and interesting because Tommy Jones is a 20-time winner. Right? AJ's never won. Hall of Famer versus somebody looking for their first title ever. That's match number two. But let's go down lane. Kimberly Pressler standing by with our first two competitors. Thank you, Rob. So, you know what? This is a head-to-head -head championship right here because these guys have won it before. They have had success in this building. And I know that everybody at home is looking forward to it. But I got to ask you, Kyle, what are you looking forward to going up against this guy today? Uh, well, yeah, I've really been looking forward to this. First off, coming back to Jupiter, Florida. We love everybody here in Jupiter. <laughs> And secondly, Bowling Chris Prather. He's been one of the hottest players on the planet the last few months, so I think it's going to be a great match, and I'm really looking forward to putting on a show for these fans. Will the winner of this entire tournament come from this match today? I think both of us agree upon that. <laughs> Good luck to you today. Chris, those are some pretty kind words that he had to say. What are your thoughts on going up against the reigning player of the year? Yeah, it's going to be a tough match no matter what. Uh, everybody out here is amazing, and Kyle's having a great two years. So for me, I'm just going to have to keep my head down, throw some good shots, and hopefully the pins fall my way. You ready to take down the defending champion? Yeah, why not? <laughs> Let's go. So this is the fourth edition of the PBA playoffs, and coming up next, it's... Two of the previous winners, Prather versus Troop. Let's meet our two opening semifinalists. He rolls out of Plainfield Lanes in Plainfield, Illinois. 
the 2019 PBA Playoffs champion, Chris Prather. That's right, the 2019 champion looking to become the first two-time winner, Rob, and the only 2022 major winner in the semifinals. Prather won his second career major at the World Championship, and he was a runner-up at the Tournament of Champions. Remember where he won this title? Portland, Portland, Maine. Maine. Right? How long ago does that seem? 2019. What a fun trip that was. It was insane. Oh, so good. The inaugural playoffs in Portland, Maine. Wow. Opening shot of our semifinals. Prather with the strike right there. Shocker. This is a race to two-point format. One point going to the winner of each game. And again, if the players are tied at one point apiece, the deciding point awarded to a winner of a ninth and tenth frame roll-off. Rolling out of Penn Station in Newton, North Carolina, the defending PBA Playoffs champion, Kyle Troop. And Kyle Troop looking to become a two-time winner as well in the PBA Playoffs. This, his best performance in 2022. This guy brought, he, he made almost a half a million dollars last year on the PBA Tour. The winningest season in the history of the PBA. Well, he's got some good DNA too, and, and that DNA yeah. is in the crowd. He, he's in the crowd, he's yeah. here, man. Papa Guppy, eight-time tour winner in the house we'll see him in a moment oh there he is there's, there's the gup oh look who, oh you see who guppy's sitting next to my dad that's your dad that's my dad yeah. oh my god that's you know that's by the way bob. guppy and bob stone coming to fox this fall <laughs> that's priceless and kyle holy oh, drop of the seven kyle going with the urethane early rather using reactive resin Player of the Year from 2021 and the defending champ of this event. What a season he had, man. Crazy. He's going with a pitch black. And that would be urethane. You know the difference between reactive resin and urethane, Rob? I've been educated on it through the years by you. Oh. Reactive resin hooks a lot more. So back-to-back -back opening jacks for Troop as he takes a seat. In between second and third arrow on this 39-foot Don Carter oil pattern. Great, they're trying to match him. Ooh, that was way wide right in. We'll get all 10 to drop. I'm not sure I've seen that hit in a while. Chris Prather going with reality, reactive resin on this championship pair of lanes. He gets it wide, and there's a bunch of oil to the outside part of the lane. You can't play that part, obviously. Chris knew it, but this is an enormous break. <laughs> that is clean up aisle five. That is, right? Spill. Take a look at his arsenal today. You heard that that real squeak to Randy on the approach just talking to the guys today They're like it's hot and I'm like well we're in Florida They're like no it's hot in here and the approach really sticky well let's not forget the humidity because mm -hmm. that also affects the approach it's not the, so much the, the dry pattern. heat it's the wet heat in Florida <laughs> I figured that one out I've lived here a long time buddy so in getting back to your your cleanup on aisle, it, it, mm -hmm. would, it would have been aisle 10. Aisle 10. Is yeah. It? See, that's why we bring you along. Championship pair, lanes 9 and 10 here at Bolero Jupiter. Three in a row for True. Opens up a little turkey right there as we take a look at today's Brunswick oil pattern, and it is the Don Carter 39. 39 feet, very squirrel. The biggest difference, though, from going from Kegel to here in Jupiter is pin carry. But you can see the blue line, that's where Kyle Troop's playing with urethane and Chris Prather obviously throwing a much stronger ball. He's gonna be farther left. That's the red line. You mentioned Kegel Lanes there in Lake Wales, Florida. That's where the round of 16 and quarterfinals yep. were held. And then we move shop a little bit further east here alongside the Atlantic and Jupiter.
likes it. Ooh. Wow. Not the Kegel hit. So first spare shot here for Kyle Troop in this race to two point format. You know, it, it, it's such a it's such a fickle. So Prather perfect. But he's over on that right lane, which gave him some issues in the second. Yeah, he just made an errant shot. No big deal. He'll probably pipe this one. Again. Mm -hmm. One, two, four. You can see on strike track powered by Kia that break point board, 2.4, it's probably about two to three boards too far to the right. Hmm. And I'm very surprised that Chris actually missed that far twice in a row on that lane. Cleans it up. Both players remain clean at through four. Both had a chance for an opening hand bone. Instead, it's three strikes All spare right. for both to start. Want to look at the tail of the tape, Randy? You know, I just like your comment. Nothing like being clean, right? Yeah, stay clean, lather up. All right, here's the game stats. As we mentioned at the outset, both of them undefeated, storming to the semifinals. Oh my God, Prather. Mm. Jesus. So the issues have moved from the right to the left now for Prather here in our opening semifinal match. And I think he's actually surprised, Rob, that this actually, that, that this got back to the pocket. Mm -hmm. You know, it was another wide shot for Chris. Such a brutal format, just a two game uh, match. And uh, man, you, you just can't afford to miss. There is the format that you mentioned. Get a point for winning. If it's tied after two, got ourselves a little two frame roll off, ninth and 10th frame roll off. Different format next Sunday yeah. for the championship showdown. Live on Fox as well, two Eastern. That's gonna well. go. Hey, Rob, have I ever told you my least favorite pin? There's 10 pins, right? There's 10 of them, right? Yeah, yeah. Have I ever told you my least favorite? It's not the it's not the head pin, nope. right? You're no, all right no. with the head pin. Yep, I'm good A with lot that. of people hate the 10 pin, yeah. myself no, included. I'm, I'm fine with that. Ten. Yeah. Uh, four? No. No. Seven? No. Could it be this eight? Yeah. Why? What happened? Long story. We got time. I don't even like to bring it up for you. I, I, at, fun, at first, it was fun and giggles for me, and now I'm like, I don't like to see my friend in pain. It, it's it's it still haunts me to this day, and, so, it, and it, it was about it was like 27 years ago. Yeah, go kids out there, go go Google it. Just what, what should we Google? Randy Peterson eight all pin. You, all you have to do is is go, worst eight pin wor break. Worst, worst break in bowling history. There you go. Yeah. All right. So I got I got my typical um, Colgate soccer goofballs watching our bowling shows. No way. Yeah, they've already got me like about 13 texts. Big thumbs up to Colgate, bro. And uh, shoot with the strike. They're going to go Google that during the commercial break and give me some immediate feedback on you leaving the eight pin and what happened. What happened? Can't wait, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> PBA playoffs semifinals match number one. Troop versus Prather. We'll wrap it up from Bolero Jupiter after this. Prather Troop, match number one in our race to two. Prather back-to-back -back spares. He is up now here to close out the sixth. Down two, working on a spare. Better. And a strike. You know who's happy to see that strike? Tell me. Chris's mom, Susan, up there in Pensacola. Yeah, Chris got to spend some time with her this week, actually, as we continue our Mother's Day honor. Look at the two of them. Nice. That's a beautiful picture. 
uh, Chris telling us, you know, mom always the one that was tough on me. You know, whether it was at school or home, she made it tough for him to practice. I love that, right? You know there's something your kid wants. You're like, right. I am going to withhold this from you. <laughs> I'm going to dangle this in front of you until you get going on your grades or you get going on this and that. So. Or unless you eat all your spinach. Right, right. Hey, back-to-back -back jacks. Yeah, we bring Susan onto the show, and all of a sudden, baby boy's figuring things yeah. out right now. Oh, that's the T-shirt today. That's the guy who gave me the T-shirt. I'll get back to that. Uh, so I want to finish up Susan Prather real quick. He was telling us that one time in high school, there was an event that he really, really wanted to bowl, but it was on her birthday. And he's like, ah, you know, she wanted to do her thing because it's, you know, her birthday. And Chris was like, I really want to shoot. I'll tell you what, Mom, for birthday gift, I'll shoot a 300 and an 800. He yeah, did so, it. so I think he went out and shot 300 and like, and eight, like 836 yeah. or something. Won the tournament, yeah, happy yeah. birthday. Yeah. yeah. Happy Mother's Day. Yeah, happy Mother's Day to Susan and yep. all the other great bowling Absolutely. moms out there. To Kyle. As he closes out the seventh, working on a strike. <laughs> Always boop, boop, boop. All of a sudden, that urethane ball is starting to get a little lazy down lane. Yeah, left the four here. Right? Remember that that other pin that he left? I heard about it. Yeah, yeah double. The, the, yeah, four times two. Yeah, that one. Just a little lazy, a little tired. Humidity will do that to you. It kind of sucks it out of you. All right, so spare there for Troop. This one, as expected, pretty close. Chris can max out with a 266. And Chris, after some issues, has kind of sorted himself out. Oh, that, uh, for a split second, Randy, Whoa. I thought that was a real head of hair. <laughs> Just, and then the little bangs gave it away, that, didn't it? That is priceless. You see the pick in oh it, too? Oh, my goodness. How are our signs in Jupiter? I didn't get a good look. I'm excited to see some of those signs. On the strike train. A little leaner on the 10. Love it. Hey, did, did you hear what's coming up a little bit later today on FS1? I, I, I've heard a rumor. Oh, man, this is good. Throwback week at the track. That's too tough to tame. Memory Lane has no speed limit in the Goodyear 400 at Darlington. Coverage begins 2 Eastern with the green flag dropping at 3.30 over on FS1, the Fox Sports app. My good friend Shannon Spake. Have you ever had the pleasure to meet Shannon? I have not. Uh, that's in his head right now. Come on. Yeah, and I'll tell you why. He just lost the lead, too. He's not used to making bad shots. Because <sighs> he doesn't he doesn't normally. Right? He could he lost what he could max out at. Still up six, but Kyle can max out now at a 248. Right again. Oh. That one curled in and they all drop. Boy, there are some internal conversations going on right now. There's some good oh, looking yeah. signs. Well, unlike Kyle Troop, he gets that nasty mm -hmm. pin out. Stupid eight pin. Dumbest pin ever. Worst. Hate it. A lot of thinking going on in that yeah. round right now. Look, you can see how frustrated he is. But Kyle Troop can take game one here in the best of two. As he's talk who's he talking to? <laughs> he keeps talking. I'm talking to Rob. And the folks at home. I don't think it's you. It can't me. be me. It's not you. You are one of the loudest individuals I've ever met in my life. That kind of hurts. That's just you have a booming voice. I, do, I, mean, I have a very big, strong. I have a big voice. mouth, but you, you, don't, you don't have to say that on national you have television. A big boy voice. I mean, this isn't FS1. This is Fox. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, bro. <laughs> Troop in the night gets them all to go. Fast pitch on the right lane for Troop. Pitch black on the left lane, and right now he sets himself up to take game one. A double and seven, and game one goes to Kyle Troop, the defending champ of this event. I tell you what, some of the issues that Prather's had in this match, it's 
Kind of remarkable he's still in contention. It really is. And guess what? He has to finish the match on the right lane where he's flagged the head pin not once but twice. Might have even been three times. I'm sorry, three times. Yeah. Well, you're the expert here. Yeah, but, but I forgot he struck in right, the second. That's, that's, that's that weird I that. I missed that one. It was the cleanup in aisle. Uh, aisle 10. Aisle 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Mm. Hates it. That's so bad. You can see that it. Look at Strike Track powered by Kia. The They're on the right Any side worse. of your screen. You can see it was a three board miss at the break point. <sighs> Leaves and the four pin. And just like that. Mm -hmm. He spares here and gets good count. Pray there will need a first strike in the tenth frame. So there's your spare. Moves over to the right. Yeah, this is. If he loses this one, Kyle's going to be kicking himself. Rob, can you remember the last time Kyle didn't win when that man was sitting in the stands? You mean my dad? No, oh, Gu Guppy. Guppy. <laughs> Guppy, the guy sitting next to your dad. <laughs> By the way, we're going to see Guppy roll coming up. Yeah. I'm going to tease that later. I can't wait to see that. By the way, when we go to break after this game, I have a great Guppy story for you. Are you going to tell our audience or are you just going to tell me during the commercial break? No, I'm going to tell our audience. Okay, good. Last shot for Kyle here. That's right, I and can get it. with that. the strike. All right, so apply some pressure to Prather. 27. Yeah, Robbie made a ball change there and went to Earth and moved in. And, you know, we saw him do that in Lake Wales at the Kegel Training Center. It starts with Earth and then as the oil pushes down the lane towards the pins, he changed to the reactive resin, and it worked perfectly for him. 4 0 in this competition. Let's see if he can make it 5 0. Prather needs the first strike in the 10th. How does that not hook? Wins game one. No hook and How no win for you. That doesn't make any sense whatsoever. You see the numbers there, 2.7 at the break point. If it was 3.7, it gets back to the head pin. One, we're talking one inch. Mm -hmm. Precision. Troop takes game one in our race to two points format. And there's going to be some conversations going on during the commercial break with Chris Prather and his team. So Kyle Troop takes the first one, 227, 212. If he can take game number two, he moves on to next Sunday's final. Yeah, Kyle, get on out there and energize this crowd. I'm with you. I'm with you. So Troop wins the first one by 15. Prather must win game two or he's done at the playoffs. Kyle Troop, 2021 PBA Player of the Year. That feels pretty damn good. <laughs> it was a special feeling, you know, to be announced Player of the Year uh, after all the hard work I put in. Yeah, it really feels good to see the hard work pay off. And, you know, it's very special for my family, my fans, and gives me the confidence moving forward for this season. It was, you know, a dream come true to not only win a major, win player of the year, but to also, you know, hold a PBA record now with the highest earnings. I got three words for you, Kyle Troop. Player of the year. Oh, oh, bang, bang, baby. Best moment of 2021 would have to be winning the belt and uh, putting the belt around Guppy's waist at the playoffs. He was super excited, super happy to be there. And, you know, he was a big WWE fan. So that was a perfect ending to the weekend. Kyle and Guppy got a chance to reclaim that belt. Troop winning game number one. And again, happy Mother's Day to all the great bowling moms out there. And, you know, this is a, this is a bittersweet day, certainly for, for Kyle and Guppy. This is a flashback to the Jonesboro Open in 2020, early February. Huge win. We see the emotions on Kyle because his mom... Sherry was, was, you know, just a nasty dog fight with cancer, and she succumbed eight days after they won that. There's a beautiful picture of his late mom, yeah. Sherry, and I love seeing young Kyle. You know, we talked to Kyle about mom, and yeah, mom's still there. That's thumbprint necklace that Kyle wears, and Guppy's got one 
as well. Guppy here in attendance. Um, you know, the support system, that's how they describe her. She was our support system, not just for Kyle, but for Guppy as well as yep. he rolled his way through the PBA and gave her that, gave that fighting spirit, that be the best you can be, which is inked up on his arm. There is Gup. Good looking dads right there hanging out on Mother's Day. Let me know when you want me to tell you the story about Uh-oh. Wow, that almost went in the gutter. 0.3, kind of like my grade point average in college for the one semester. You see the location at the break point on strike track. That's the farthest shot right for any player today. So, we're, uh, I'm 19 years old. It's like my second year on tour. Kyle dead. cleans that one up. I'm dead broke, and I need a ride to the next event. This all sounds like yesterday, by the way, for you. No, dude, this is a long time ago. <laughs> Guppy Troop has this motorhome, right? Oh, man. And I'm like, I got kind of friendly. You know, Guppy was one of the most personal people ever. On still tour. is. Still and still is. is. Everybody loves Guppy. So he kind of took a shining to me, and, and I asked him for a ride. He said, yep, hop into the bus. So... <laughs> Shot there by Chris. Ball change as well. So I hop in the bus, and I wasn't the only one. It was like the Partridge family oh, going to the next debate. It was great. Oh my goodness! I and, and, and let me just say that it, that wasn't that was the first time, but it wasn't the last. Did you walk out of that bus a changed man? <laughs> Maybe scarred. I don't know. Changed. <laughs> there is Gup. Oh man, he's, yeah, he sees himself oh, we on have, TV. We've had we had some great times over the years. Oh my goodness, we're gonna be seeing Gup Bowling next month. Oh my goodness, Another. they're all gonna fall. They all fell. I, I thought this only happens in Kegel. Uh, Shark Kent. Crazy. I. Uh, you, you can't even describe what just you happened there. And no, that's no. twice it's happened today, yeah, Dylan. Yeah. yeah. The 369 and just... That's cleanup aisle 9, I believe. Yeah, that's cleanup aisle 9. Yeah, spill aisle 9 and clean up, please. Kyle, back to the urethane on the right lane. Money. It's a spare strike for Troop here in match number two of our opening semifinal contest. Kyle wins. He moves on next Sunday to the championship showdown here on Fox from Bolero Jupiter. Prather must win this match to force a ninth and 10th frame roll off. So a strike there for Kyle, and we've been talking, Randy, that we're going to see Guppy Bowl. Yeah, yeah, you've the, mentioned it. I have, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell it hard now. <laughs> it's the 2022 Guaranteed Rate PBA Tour returns here to Bolero Jupiter. Monday, June 6th, it is the King of the Lanes Royal Family Edition on FS1, 9 Eastern. Team Troop right there. Team Barnes, Chris and Ryan. Chris Paul will not be participating in this event. Is no. that right? How about Jordan? Look at the head of lettuce on Jordan Malott rolling with his dad, Wes. <laughs> Carolyn Doran Ballard and her daughter will be there. Parker Bone III and his son as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be amazing. I got a question for you, though, Rob. Uh -huh. Do you think that that Gup and Kyle will have matching onesies? So I've already been given a fashion update. No way. Yeah, yeah, Guppy told me. Okay, tell I'll me. Just, I'll leave it at this, that um, boy, Guppy's getting so much airtime today. Dude, it's on fire. We might have to pay him he's on so much. Um, Kyle, Kyle's got a guy, got a guy in wardrobe. Okay. And let's just say there will be a flashback to an old Guppy outfit. <sighs> and then the other thing that I was, I was promised is a Gup thrust. Oh, yeah. So, America, yeah. prepare yourself I, I think, for I a think, Gup thrust. I think... Uh, Kyle was pretty adamant on our conference call with him that you forget the Pete Weber ch chop, whatever the yeah, chop is. Yeah, crotch shot. Yeah, that one. Uh, that one. Because Gup, 
Gup was the king of the thrust. The Gup thrust. Prather takes a seat, dropped the opening four. And so he's got a 20 pin lead here as Kyle looks for three in a row to close out the fourth. Come on, seven pin. Rotten. It's got to be the three six pocket or the one two. Come on. Well, not very lucky here. But urethane on the right lane and reactive resin on the left lane, Rob, spells what? Ten boards difference Ooh. in how he's playing the two lanes. What a lonely looking seven pin there, huh? They're waiting for, they're waiting for uh, a Deadwood. A hanger, yeah, Deadwood to get out. All right, oh, yeah. so junior bowlers, here's your chance to become a PBA junior national champ, compete to win more than $10,000 in Smart scholarships, head to PBA.com today. Sign up and find a PBA Junior Regional Qualifier near you. <laughs> Saw those list of the qualifiers. Georgia, Texas, Jersey, Wisconsin, California. Did I tell you what, um, speaking of Milwaukee, did I tell you I, I, I put on my suit pants today? One leg at a time, just like you. And? I, I dug into my pocket. I was like, gosh, something in here. What is it? <laughs> Took out a card. Holler House. Love it. Holler House business card. There you go, Kyle. Thank you so much for that. He's a little peeved right now. About perfect, don't you think? No. Nope. Chris Prather has not been perfect on this right lane. He has been this game. Well, the with the exception of the spill, right? right. Yeah, wow. That's typical. He gets that great break and then leaves a ring and ten on a good shot, right? I mean, look at that. That's blue almost entirely over red. Right? right? Yeah. I mean, watch him pose. There it is. There's a the pose. Yeah, take a picture. Loved it. Oh. He actually switched balls on that right lane to a dark code. 95% of the time on the tour, the 10 pin is cleaned up. You know who brings us those great stats? Our, our good friends at Lane Talk. For more information, go to lanetalk.com. Again, we mentioned Chris Prather. Getting to the semifinals, no losses, taking care of Miller and Barrett. Fell here in game number one to Kyle Troop in our opening semifinals today. Tommy Jones, AJ Johnson still to come. Either must win this match though. Force a two frame roll off and another strike for the uh, Clark Kent lookalike. Opening four, a spare, and then another strike for Prather. He is in control here in match number two. Can Kyle Troop put it together and sweep Prather out of the semis? Welcome back, Jupiter, Florida. Fox Sports Live coverage of the 2022 PBA playoffs. We are in game number two. Look at that Kyle Troop sign back there, picking it out. Again, our pledge, Randy. You bring a sign, we're putting you on TV. Yep. Bring a sign, we'll make you shine. Bring a dog, we'll put you on TV too. Look at the VIPs. Who, who is that? Look at mom knows the camera's on uh. it, right? Mom knows. <laughs> dad, no idea with the finger. You can't hear the clapping, Dad. <laughs> is there any truth to to this this thing that I heard that oh, man. that your mom and dad yeah. were on our very first yes. Fox show? first ever fox uh down in uh, lake wales yeah. right yeah yeah proud they're proud florida residents they're awesome that's yep. right they're so awesome and i you know i can say this with conviction the apple doesn't fall far from the yeah. tree oh did you see how fast mom stood up when she saw you within 10 yards of her <laughs> there you go kyle Ooh, a little look a little look from mr troop only down 10. 
He's checking out strike track numbers to his right on the big screen. And now Kyle can tie it up with a strike here in the seventh. Again, if Kyle can win here game two, he moves on to next Sunday's championship showdown on Fox. And another strike. And you want to know what separates these great players, Rob? Look at what he's doing on the right lane, okay? How straight he's going with the earth aim. And look at him curve that reactive resin ball on the left lane. Being able to play multiple angles, changing speeds, changing rotation. That's what it takes to be a top-level professional on the PBA tour. Three strikes in a row, five overall. And we are level. Prather trying to change that as we close out the seventh in game two. Oh boy. Did not come home. That has been a theme for him on that right lane. You have, you Slicker than an otter's pocket you. when you get it that far right. <laughs> Slicker than an otter's pocket. Oh my goodness. When do you come up with these things during your day? What is it like you know, you know, on the golf course? Sometimes. Is it margarita time? <laughs> oh, Prather. Open frame. Ouch. Troop had just leveled uh. things up. And Chris Can I have a re -rack, please? has just coughed it up. <sighs> uh, good use of a re-rack slash timeout right now as you take a look at the Kia right. PBA playoff it's scoreboard. My soul right now. Prather down 12 as we start the eighth. Remember Chris started so strong, opening four strikes, then a nine spare, then another strike, and then here, hey, what are you looking at? open frame. First open frame we've had in our two matches today, and it comes here in the seventh. Horrible yeah. timing. Yeah, and he was really good on the right lane, and then he catches the crumbler on the left lane, and that was the only reason why he had that four-bagger. Curls that one in nicely. It, it hasn't really been Chris Crather like execution today. Agreed. Mm. I think he would agree with you as well. Still have another semifinal showdown to come. AJ Johnson, your 10 seed, taking on six seed Tommy Jones. Boy, there's some interesting back history to that showdown. Yeah. My goodness. I, I was not aware of it, and I became quickly enlightened. <laughs> we'll have more on that a little bit later. Lead has suddenly switched to the troop camp. He's up 12 and looking to add to it. Ooh. Ten pin shy of a hand bone. You know, what I'm really missing thus far today, and I mean, we still have time, but I, I mean, I haven't gotten a Paps six pack right? alert. I haven't uh, grasped a Paps. Yeah. I haven't had anything that was really Paps tastic. Uh, Nobody's I, more disappointed than me. I mean, hang on, Kyle. Yeah, clean that one up. He stuck around for it too. I'm going to see this one start to finish. So the lead now down to 11 was 12. Please. Is though working off a strike when he steps up in the ninth. Re-rack taken by Troop. Obviously the max scores there. Yeah, seemed to be tight. It's pretty much what we expected. Again, Fox Bet had Kyle Troop as the favorite. He did take game number one, 227 to 212. Remember, Prather missed the pocket four times. Four times and still only lost by 15. Yeah, and then miss, misses that spare, the one, two, the one, two, four. There you go. They both seem to have this left lane pretty well figured out. Right lane, not so much. Right lane's a uh, prickly, a little, a little testy. Yeah. I think that's why Kyle stayed with urethane on that lane. Oh my! Leaves 
just uh, double wood. Look at that miss. Four boards. Look at uh, strike track powered by Kia. Blue line, the red line. That sucker peeled off left immediately and. Uh, drops that. Yeah. But he may have just been dropped from this tournament. He is in big trouble here as we begin the 10th. All right, look at his mass score now. It's 227. Kyle Troop, if he goes spare strike in the 10th frame, will shoot 228. I will be on that right lane in the 10th. All but over now. Kyle Troop just needs a mark. Depending on whether or not Chris covers the 10 pin and then his count. So a strike will give him 216, which will force Kyle Troop to mark. If he strikes on this ball and Kyle gets nine out, Kyle will shoot 216. Now Kyle doesn't need a mark. He needs nine in two shots. Nine in two shots. Yes, sir. I would like to think he can do that. Yeah, he's going to do that. Especially with the urethane ball in the right lane. He's going nice and straight. He's going to control the pocket. And I think the worst thing that happens to Kyle is he leaves a 10 pin. Kyle's a showman. He's going to want to strike and he's going to want to energize this crowd. Absolutely. But it's been a tough year for him when he made everything look so easy last season. Biggest shot of 2022 for Kyle True so far. One shot away from seeing him next Sunday live on Fox, and he's going to have some big ones then. For the win! Love you, Mom. That's for you, Mom! <laughs> on Mother's Day, Kyle Troop, his Uber driver, Guppy Troop. <laughs> wow. Move on. 2-0. Kyle Troop yet to lose here at the Kia PBA playoffs. Uh, happy for the Troop family. Yep. They have been through so much after losing the matriarch Sherry in up 2020. Come on, dude. Always a gentleman, always a class act, both of them, but. Yeah, we got a soft spot for you, Kyle Troop. We got a soft spot for your whole family. So, Kyle Troop and team move on. 233, 215. So your number nine seed moves on to the final. Coming up next, semifinal number two here on Fox 10 seed AJ Johnson for six seed Tommy Jones. Kyle Troop with the winning shot. Love you, Mom. That's for you, Mom. Kimberly with our winner. Thanks, Rob. So emotional win for you here, Kyle. Tell us about this, because I know you just dedicated this to your amazing mom. I mean, it's Mother's Day. I uh, love you, Mom. You know, we miss you so much. Uh, but you gave me the strength to trust this blue ball in the right lane that whole second game. Uh, this was a tough pair. It was getting pretty funky, but I just told myself to make a good one for Mom there in the 10th, and that was probably the best one of the game. I uh, love you, Mom, but more importantly, Tina Nevitt, we love you too. I know you're fighting, you're going through some things, so happy Mother's Day to you as well. Congratulations on moving on to the finals. Thank you. Love you, Kyle. I love all those moms out there. Love you too, Gup. Man, what a great family. Wow. Wow. Let's go! There you go, Kyle. Get us going, man. There are so many brave moms out there going through some hellacious fights. And we are all in the corner with you here on this Mother's Day 2022. Kyle Troop able to move, move on to next Sunday's title showdown who will he face find out with us will it be aj johnson or the hall of famer tommy jones semifinal number two coming up next how are you able to get through that we welcome you back to fox sports live coverage of the 2022 kia pba playoffs kyle troop sweeping chris prather 
Troop now 6-0 here at the playoffs. He moves on to next Sunday's final show live right here on Fox 2 p.m. Eastern. Coming up next, we're going to find out who he will meet in that final showdown. Our live coverage here from Bolero, Jupiter, Florida continues. And we love it when our good friends in social media are as engaged in PBA activity yeah. as we are reality television personality. Chris Manzo fired off this tweet. And yeah, you're right, it is super random, but it is his new obsession. It's been our obsession for a while. And Chris and his huge following, watching bowling. Chris, here. He's here. Awesome. No, 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 like, not just here, like here live on Fox right now with Kimberly. No yeah, yeah, Kimberly's got him. I sure do. And he's standing lane side with me. So, Chris, you, you saw the tweet just a few short weeks ago. You were saying that the PBA is your newest obsession. So you are now here. What's this moment like for you? It has lived up to the hype. I'm next to very, I'm not going to drop names and important people over there. It's been so much fun to watch. It's uh, honestly, I, I, I sent a tweet really expecting like four people to like it. I didn't think it would end here. So I'm, I'm still absorbing everything. Right. Well, now. we are very happy you're here. What's your favorite thing so far? Oh, so honestly, so far, it's just meeting everybody and, and everyone's been so nice. It's like really a community. Talking to you is weird. I feel like I should be talking to someone else on that side and then bowling right after. So I don't know what to do in this, in this spot. Well, you did a Great job, and I'm actually going to let you go sit back over there in the stands and celebrate with all those people, and congratulations on being here. Will do. Thanks again, everyone. Chris, you're always welcome. You're always welcome. And by the way, I can't believe he borrowed your Ozzy Osbourne T-shirt. I was going to say, man, is that a cool T-shirt? <laughs> it's a great one. Great one. I'm like, send that one in a medium <laughs> over here to Stone. Love all it. right, so Kyle Troop able to win in our first semifinal showdown. Coming up next, it's the Hall of Famer, Tommy Jones. Hanging on A.J. Johnson and the story about A.J., and he's probably just nauseated about this story. This point is, here's probably the best guy on the tour who's never won on the tour and he's got right. a great opportunity this weekend and then hopefully next weekend yeah yeah well you know it, everything ch changed for aj johnson in 2022 when he started working with coach mark baker and mark baker all he did was change his mental outlook and aj johnson has put together his best season ever and here he is trying to win for the first time and Two games away from making it one step closer for AJ to capture that very first title. I got a roll off win there in yeah. the quarterfinals. Maybe the most athletic bowler out yep. there on the tour. Great I, athlete. I don't want to take him, take him in uh, arm to arm wrestling combat over there. But he's going up against the Hall of Famer. And we keep saying this, the Hall of Famer. But there's a reason. Tommy Jones is one of the best to ever play this game. Yeah. And guess what? 2022 has been kind of a rebirth for him here on the tour. It really has been. I mean, Tommy made, what, three major telecasts uh, for the season. Who can forget what he did in 2020 when he won the Hall of Fame Classic by shooting 300 in the title match? against Jesper Svensson, it went to a roll-off, mm -hmm. and Tommy was perfect in the roll-off. That last shot uh, by Jesper Svensson, and it was over because Tommy never missed. Hey, take a look at your odds, courtesy of Fox that's, Bet. That's still mind-boggling. <laughs> right? Wait, that's the same number for both of them. Yeah, I know. You know what that I means? Mean, Tommy's got to be favored. Yeah, we might be having a roll-off then. But you know what's next? Kimberly with AJ and Tommy. Thanks, Rob. So, AJ, we have talked about this in the pre-show interview that you said that you have idolized this guy your entire life. In fact, you mirror your game after him, but you also said that you want to beat him very badly. Why is that? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I, I didn't mean to date Tommy uh, that much, but uh, when I was a kid, I used to watch him quite a bit, you know, mo model my game after him. Uh, been teammates on Team USA, but, uh, you know, we, we know that Tommy likes to give, give crap to guys and joke around, and he's made his comments and, you know, made a few things to me that, that I have not forgotten. Um, so, uh, so I just want to keep uh, keep doing what I'm doing, and uh, hopefully the pins fall my way. Do you want to share with us what some of those things are? Or are you going to let us slide? Uh, he knows what he said. <laughs> he knows what he said. Thank you so much for your time, Tommy. Well, you heard what he had to say. What do you think about the fact that he's using the words that you know you told him at some point to motivate him to try and beat you today? Well, I know his parents, so it just says that stuff that they say where he doesn't listen means he actually does listen, so keep doing what you're doing, you know. But, uh, no, AJ's a, he's a great young man. He was raised right, and, uh, you know, it was, a lot of things are said, you know, to kind of motivate but also, you know, look after, and, uh, you know, they get taken the wrong way, they get taken the wrong way. You know, I'm just looking out for people. And the storyline so far has been the fact that, and you've said it yourself, that you're the old man out on tour, but you've been winning left and right. Are you ready to make another example today? Well, yeah, I mean, there's something to be said about experience and, uh, you know, but uh, 
I have uh, a few titles, and he's still looking for number one. So I, I've got that monkey off my back, back, and he's still trying to, to get it off of his. So we'll see what happens. Woo, the trash talking down here. We'll send it back to you guys. Uh, this one just got a little, got, got a little got spicy. Very, got a little, yeah, got a little, got a little spicy. Oh, wait, we got an odds update. Things have changed during the course of that interview. Uh, How about that? Jones versus AJ coming up next live on Fox. A giant looking to add to his Hall of Fame resume. An underdog searching for his first PBA title. Yes! Tommy Jones. AJ Johnson. Who's going to punch their ticket to the PBA Playoffs Finals? Let's, Let's find out. And we are back live inside Bolero. Jupiter continuing coverage of the 2022 Kia PBA Playoffs. Earlier, Kyle Troop swept Chris Prather. He is off to next Sunday's showdown. Who will he meet? Will it be Toby Jones or A.J. Johnson? He bowls out of Golden Lanes in Simpsonville, South Carolina. PBA Hall of Famer, Tommy Jones. Tommy Jones, a three-time major finalist in 2022. The Players' Championship, the Tournament of Champions, and the World Championship. Continues his great year with his best PBA playoffs performance in his second appearance. He was telling us this week, you know, it's proven to myself that I can still do this week in and week out. And the one thing that he's done differently started before the season. He bowled more leading into the campaign than he's really probably ever had in a long time. And it's really paid off. 43 years old. Left the 10 pin. It's going to be interesting to see in this match if either player, Jones or Johnson, uses urethane on that tricky right lane. Yeah. Well, they, they watched the first two matches. Yeah, yeah. They know what went down on that right lane. And they got practice, so they know what's going on. Tommy, 20 tour titles. That's tied for 13th most in PBA history. He's too shy of tying the great Marshall Holman for 12th on the list with 22. Tommy cleans that one up. Bowl in Wheaton and Parkside Lanes in Aurora, Illinois, A.J. Jackson. The number 10 seed in this event, A.J. Johnson, with a 3-1 game record coming in. He was a two-time major finalist this season. The U.S. Open and the Masters continuing his great year with his best PBA performance ever. Still looking for PBA title number one. Yeah, six times a bridesmaid. But he's been giving himself more and more chances to get that win. He's getting more and more comfortable with every match and telling us how much he's really enjoying the moment. You know who else is enjoying this moment? I, I think I have a feeling. Yeah, it's a teaser. Right of target is AJ. And, oh. and there it is, right again, right there. I feel like you've seen this movie before. Just look at your number, 2.3 at the break point, and you just can't get it back from that spot on that right lane. Tough pickup, and an open frame to start for AJ. All right, we mentioned Somebody's watching back home on this Mother's Day. It has to be, right? AJ's mom. Here's Judy Johnson. Hey, AJ. I'm in my spot with two of your biggest fans. Ready to watch you do your thing today. You know me and my superstitions, so I had my coffee in my lucky mug. I have on my shirt with our favorite word, believe, buddy. I have on my lucky bracelets. And now it's time for you to do your thing. 
Yeah, he does this thing right there, Judy, on the left lane, getting back on track with the strike right there. You saw his his niece, Juliana, his nephew, Mason, sitting there with mom, Judy, and, and we were talking to AJ. He's like, mom would be here, but she's crazy superstitious. Yeah. Right there for Tommy on that difficult right lane, so he started spare strike. Big high backswing of Tommy Jones, the bent elbow and the cup wrist at the bottom of the swing, creates all that power and you can see the rotation right there. Tommy using a Black Widow Ghost on both lanes. You see his arsenal. Left the 3-6-10. Get everybody fighting for that, that belt, that WWE belt that goes to the playoff winner. Kyle Troop, your defending champ, and he'll have a chance to defend that crown next Sunday live right here on Fox 2 Eastern. You know how bad he wants another one of those? Because I think Guppy took his other one. Up. Open oh, frame, my goodness. So both AJ and TJ with open frames here, and we've only gone two and a half frames. Yeah, give it, he just gives it right back to AJ. You can sense this crowd wants to get going, and there just hasn't really been the reason yet. Yeah. AJ using a jackal ghost. Who comes up with these names? I, I, Who's a jackal know. ghost? Who even thinks about that? <laughs> really in the deserts of Arizona with something. Oh my goodness. Oh. Jackal ghost came out of nowhere to take down that 10, <laughs> but couldn't finish off the seven. Jackal ghost. I was asked a couple of times to come up with some names for bowling balls. Oh, geez, where did this go? Well, and so I thought, like, if you made a ball that, like, really hooked a lot, right, really strong, and you make it black, I would I would call it tar. Okay. Okay. Let's think about it. Yeah. I mean, tar, it's yeah. sticky. Yeah. It's going to grab the lane. It's going to hook a lot. I'd make it the traditional black that we used to, you know, that we used to all, that, that was the only balls yeah, we ever threw. Yeah, the only thing you guys ones. had. Yeah. Take a look at the tail of the tape between AJ and TJ, Tommy Jones. AJ with the better average and the better high game. Both of them enter this semifinal with a three and one mark. The winner to take on Kyle Troop next Sunday. Again, this is a race to two point format. Messenger missing the 10. And again, the biggest difference between here in Jupiter and the Kegel Training Center in Lake Wales was we saw some extraordinary pin carry in Lake Wales. And uh, all of a sudden now we're seeing messengers flying across, not taking care of business. We're seeing open frames. We're seeing a right lane that is just destroying everybody. Yeah. AJ gets that one to go. Oh. Come on, Edge. I like how AJ doesn't actually sit in the seat. Sits on the arm up there. <laughs> Get a better look. He's young. Player of the year. Can you believe it was that long ago when he was player of the year? 506. Wow. Not really good at math, but that seems like it was like what, 16 years ago. There you go. There you go, Tommy. So Tommy using a reactive ball in that lane, and he's just going much straighter. Remember how much angle that Chris Prather was creating on that right lane, and he'd get a, an inch or two too far to the right and miss the head pin. Tommy's just going much straighter on that lane. So Tommy with 
a pair of strikes on that right lane here, but his eyes go down and he's still got some questions to answer. Randy, I finally have some good news for you. Tell me. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm waiting. Uh, I'd like to welcome you to the Beer Frame, sponsored yeah. by Pabst Blue Ribbon in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say your favorite line after the shot. Yeah, Tommy with the strike, grabs a Pabst today, and please drink responsibly. That was Pabst Tastic. Grabs a Pabst. The keys to accentuate the S and the T. Don't blend them together. No, I get that. I get that, but I, I know, I also know how you're able to enunciate. Uh, you know the words. Mm -hmm. I, I, I get that you're. How you put words together? I, I get that you're a wordsmith, but, uh. I, but I also know how and where you got your training. You do? Yeah, from watching Ron Burgundy, oh. unique New York. Scotch, 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 Scotch. <laughs> Look Whoa. at this! That was almost back-to-back -back seven tens for him on the right lane. He got bailed out the last time, yeah. got bailed out again. Yeah, so typically when you see this type of pin carry, it tells a player one thing and one thing only. Get out of that bowling ball. Get so, into something different. So get out of the jackal ghost. <laughs> <laughs> you are Run from the jackal ghost. The jackal ghost is on your tail. It's going to take you down. It's the jackal ghost. Most ridiculous name ever, but I hope I get a jackal ghost in my my P.O. box sometime oh, soon. I'm sure Motive will be sending you something, the but I'm not jackal. sure it's going to be a jackal ghost. <laughs> I want a jackal ghost. Uh, Do they make it in a six pound? I got Randy. I got him good. It's been a while. <laughs> Tommy oh. Jones off a pair of strikes. There's three spares in a row for A.J. Johnson. Hasn't struck since the second. Gets them all to go here. Jackal Ghost drops them all. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's been that kind of start for A.J. Johnson. Trying to sort his way through match number one of his semifinal showdown with Tommy Jones. Uh, 2022 PBA playoffs presented by Kia continue to roll on here on Fox Sports from Jupiter, Florida. And Tommy Jones, remember, inducted into the PBA Hall of Fame on a weekend that he was also the number two seed in a tournament that was tied to that event. And man, you could not have scripted a better, more memorable title match than what happened at the PBA Hall of Fame Classic. Tommy Jones, Simpsonville, South Carolina. To make the show was, you know, dream come true. And then got to have my Jeter moment, my one shining moment, because it still gives me cold chills. His pursuit of 300 is on. Pull 300 in the title match, probably 12 hours after getting inducted to the Hall of Fame. Just absolutely dream come true and everything you can imagine. Hearing how excited Randy and Rob were and, and the crowd. Yes! 300 for the Hall of Famer! I was so nervous, but yet so calm at the same time. It was kind of a feeling that I've never had before. You guys are awesome. Thank you. That was the first show my mom had ever been to because she just doesn't like to fly by herself and all those things. So that was pretty cool that she got to witness it. That whole weekend is just still a blur to me. And to know that I was in that moment is something that I'll cherish for the rest of my life. Man, I still get a little goosebumps I'm thinking about you. that moment, right? And, and let's not forget, in the, the match prior <clears throat> to that, come on, come on. he only managed the 190 game. Right. But the other thing was, you know, the fact that, you know, obviously it's Mother's Day. Yeah. And, and his mom, Linda, was there to see it. We got a great Linda story coming up here. Hold on uh -oh. a second. Tommy. That one curves in nice. You got Drops a, him in there. So You got a great Linda story. I do. I love a good Linda story. All right. So she worked as a lead coordinator at the bowling center. And, you know, Tommy would go into work with her. So she let him bowl. And, you know, he said, like, look, it kept me out of trouble. I'm out there bowling six to seven hours a day. But... As he started getting older, sixth grade, you know, he was starting to play some other sports or whatever. Uh, and he's like, Mom, I'm going to go play some basketball. And, and she's like, oh, come hang out here. Let me, let me go play. So she's like, let's go play some basketball in the backyard, right? So they go play some ball. There's a loose ball, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, L Linda's like, you know, I'm not going to go floor burn it up for this. But gave the boy a little push. Block or charge? Uh, it, it, was a, it was both. It was a block <laughs> and a charge on Linda. Good. She got uh, messenger. Yeah! So Linda, not only did she kind of give TJ a little push, and he fell down, Linda landed on him, broke his collarbone, 
three places. <laughs> oh my she goodness. dropped a turkey on his collarbone. Oh, my Lord. Yep. And he's like, well, that took me out of baseball, so bowling it is. Good. Go! And there's his reaction. There he is, yeah. That's a little ham bone as the messenger drops the 10. It's the PBA's version of Thanos. Ooh. Yeah. All right. I'll buy that. for A.J. Johnson. Do you, is it just my ears? You hear a lot of clanking on yeah. A.J.'s shot. He's got all that he's, all that jewelry. He's got a little bling around yeah. his neck, and that's where you're hearing. Oh, that one curved in nicely, huh? Well, it needed that one. So back-to-back -back jacks for A.J. He's down 23. Just three strikes in this one. Remember, he opened with an open frame in the first. Tommy Jones has certainly picked things up four in a row. So AJ needs this one here as we begin the eighth. Down 23. Oh boy. Yikes. Oh, that one was pretty good. How do you attack this one here, Randy? Uh, you, it's like shooting the, the baby split. You're going to try to get the ball over to the right side of that three pin, that pin to the right, and you're going to try to cut it over in the four seven. Mm, missed it. Another Second big, open frame. Yeah, another big opening. <sighs> Started that way, and it's kind of carried on. Tommy is really in control here of match number one, though. Remember, this is a race to two-point format. You get one point for winning a game. Tommy's in great control for this one, which mm -hmm. means AJ's going to have to win game two to force that ninth and tenth frame roll off. Oh, boy. What do we, got? What do we got? It's happening. Talk to me. It's happening. We've got a pack Talk six pack this. alert. TJ strikes here. He's going to win $1,000 sponsored by Paps Blue Ribbon of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Please remember to drink responsibly. This is our first Paps six-pack alert this Mother's Day. Could not be more excited. Look at that. And Tommy's just working the moment, right? Just sweeps the rack. A little timeout with the anticipation build up 53 and ready to crack open a six-pack. No! Ah, no! Six-pack, put it back in the fridge. <clears throat> We're gonna add 500 bucks to the jackpot, which will keep building until someone cashes in. Man, I could have used a Paps Blue Ribbon right about now. There was a lot of six packs in uh, Lake Wales. Just were there? Yeah, you. I mean, I know that you saw some of it. Uh, you I wasn't invited. You weren't physically there, but. Can we do a little arts and crafts? It's going to the tape. And it looks like he's taping up that spare ball again. We've seen him have trouble with in the past. USFL action next Saturday here on Fox 3 Eastern. Breakers and the Generals. Oh. <gasps> Missed it! Seen it before. He goes to tape in the spare ball and misses a single pin spare. Still a big lead. He's not going to lose oh. game one. Wow, they both have two open frames here. Well, Tommy's at 195 right now. A.J. Johnson can strike out for 195. So simple math means Tommy would need one if AJ strikes out. All right, AJ. Needed Ooh. that one as his mind starts to kind of move on to game number two. Yep. Oh. Always a one. It's pretty good. I mean, it just doesn't, doesn't, do, doesn't do what you expect. Again, AJ, 29 years old from Oswego, Illinois. Where's that? In Illinois. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> <Johnson>. <laughs> Messenger! Yeah! Get on 
Come on down. I, I don't know where else we go. Appreciate it. It's ready. <laughs> we can ask him during the commercial Appreciate break. That. I bet there's a device on your phone that hello, will tell you where Hello, it is. Google. <laughs> I, I had it written down years ago. And I can't remember where it is. No, somebody's helping me out now. Pension. I don't know where it is. Near Aurora? So it's like a, a fur outside of Naperville. So it's, it's, it's west of Chicago in the burbs. There's another strike from AJ. One strike away to finish with a 195. Pretty crazy how the messenger and the one before it that split were on top of one another. I don't think Tommy cares. It, it, you know, it's, it's close to... Montgomery, which I think... Are we still doing geography isn't class right Sh now? Isn't Sean Rash M Montgomery? Ooh. Yeah, he is. You didn't, you didn't think I knew my geography. You, all, you continue to surprise me. So 193. Yep. Well, Tommy's going to win game number one. But we're not done here yet. Game number two to come. It is a must win for A.J. Johnson. Well, that was quiet. Why huh? release. Messenger is going to miss this one, but it doesn't matter. Tommy Jones is your winner here in game one of this second semifinal at the PBA playoffs. Game number two between Jones and Johnson next here on Fox. Semi-final number two, game number two. A.J. Johnson must win to force a two-ball roll-off as he takes on Tommy Jones, Rob Stone, Randy Peterson, Kimberly Pressler, and Kyle Troop has joined us. Kyle Troop earlier today moving on to next Sunday's championship showdown. We'll take on one of these two guys. Good to have you with us, buddy. Glad to be with you guys. Always good to see you, man. Emotional day today for you. Oh, a little bit, man. It's a special day. You know, Mother's Day. Johnson starts with a strike. Remember, he started last match with an open frame. Started with a strike and a ball change. Yeah. And during the break, I said, if he doesn't go to a different orb, he's got no chance of winning this next game. So you're, you're telling me he's no longer running with the Jackal Ghost. <laughs> he is not. What is the favorite all-time bowling ball name that you've come across? Because I've kind of fallen in love with the Jackal Ghost for no reason at all. Mm, I may just have to agree with you on that yeah, one, Rob. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. good. I, I can tell you what my favorite all-time game is. What's that? X-Factor. Yeah. All right. That was my first 300 ball, Randy. That was my last tour win. I, I don't want to tell you how long ago it was. Check out the split screen. I remember we heard it. A.J. Johnson say he idolized Tommy growing up, and he mirrored his game after Tommy. Tommy, do you, do you think they look anything alike, Cop? Pretty close, huh? I mean, I can't do one-handed bowling very well, but uh, that looks like pretty spitting, spitting image of one yeah. another. It's good stuff by our... AJ's just got a little bit bigger muscles than Tommy. <laughs> uh, he'll remind you of that too, right? Yeah. Great. Oh, these? <laughs> oh, yeah, I do work out. Do you even lift, bro? So Ball eight. change for Tommy as well. So no longer running with the Black Widow Ghost. No, I'll, I'll get the name here in a second. Oh, boy. That didn't curve. That didn't hook either. Looks like he moved back right and well, he, straighten it up a little right? bit. I mean, his strategy has been brilliant, though, thus far, because he's not way in and, and really carving it, right? He's been going pretty straight. Ninety four point seven percent of the time it's made every time. The two four. Clings that one up, and that is your spare of the game, sponsored by Guaranteed Rate. If you believe it, you can do it. Guaranteed Rate. Believe you will. As we take another look at the spare of the game, brought to you by Guaranteed Rate. So, Rob, the ball change that A.J. Johnson went to, instead of the Jackal Ghost. Yeah, better be a good name. It's a Venom Shock, but only on the left lane. Yeah, that was definitely a, a thing, you know, lane to lane has been different from 
match to match. So AJ's on that right lane, and that caused caused you guys all kind of problems. Well, but Kyle, Kyle, I mean, Kyle, you're brilliant in that you stayed with the urethane on the right lane. And tell us why you did that. Yeah, I mean, I just felt like for me, the, the right lane is a lot earlier, a little bit tighter down lane. And honestly, I just was a little worried with what my resin ball reaction was going to do. Uh, I knew my opponent was fishing a little bit, so I just felt like I can trust my ability, you know, just use my speed adjustment a little bit more uh -huh. to stay in urethane. It was almost more of a, a comfort thing for me. Right, right. And how about how about that last shot on that right, on that right lane with the urethane for the money? Uh, that was probably the best one of the game. Man. You know, uh, that was the one for mom, Randy. <laughs> that was strong, brother. AJ was looking for three in a row. That was weird. Didn't want to wish Happy Mother's Day to AJ's mom, Judy Johnson, watching uh, back home in the Oswego, Illinois area, which we now know where it is located in Illinois. <laughs> Just let me know if there's anything else you need, Rob. Oh, he missed the two pin. You gotta be kidding me. Seriously? Man, we had four open frames in their last match, each with two, and now another one here for AJ. That should not happen. Uh, your thoughts on throwing plastic and missing a two pin? Uh, just sounds a bad executed shot, Randy, you know, and for me, anytime I miss a spare, it's lack of focus. So he could have been thinking forward about right? his adjustment off of it, how right. he left it. it ex I mean, inexcusable. inexcusable though, yeah, yeah. definitely. Was that an oh boy because he didn't think it was going to get back from that spot, Kyle? I'm not quite sure. I mean, that's, I mean, we're looking at the strike track. That's pretty close to the same. Uh, you know, maybe it could have been something with a feel, but if he thinks he didn't throw that one that good and it went through the pocket like that, right. he's going to be pretty good. He's going to uh, be in the driver's seat on that lane, yep. which I feel like is the tougher lane of the two. Tommy Jones gets to finish game two on the left lane. Oh, he got out of that ball. He threw a black ice, the last shot that didn't hook. And now he's going back to the Black Widow Ghost. Look out. Rob, say it with me. Whoa, say it with me one time. Black that Widow Ghost. Early. That one never hooks. Black Widow Ghost. It's very ghost, very ghosty today. I'm it's, not really it's, sure. It, what, it's, what does ghost have to do with bowling? And, and why do we have to keep referencing these ghosts so often? <laughs> jackal ghost I get like that makes perfect sense we've all come across a jackal ghost once or twice in our life right but a black widow ghost come on now we're just being ridiculous. oh no another oh, air God. ball are you kidding oh, me God you're so bad oh, what is going on guys I don't know but you know the last time we saw Tommy go to tape in that spare ball he missed a single pin and that was back in Lake Wales at, at Kegel so he goes to tape the spare ball up, whips a single pin. Last game, he goes to tape up the spare ball, whips the 10 pin. Now he just missed a four pin. Sounds like it's in his head now. That could be a tough this one. This is crazy. Between these two, that is four, I'm sorry, six open frames. Three apiece. AJ on the right. Curls that one in and gets them all to go. And that's one thing you have to do. You know, as much as he feels like he's struggling, he missed the two pin, uh, the door opened up. You've yep. got to forget about that, stay present, step up in the fourth frame, execute a perfect shot, and now he's back in position to win the game. Great shot for AJ. Again, this is a race to two points here next Sunday live on Fox, though. Different different format and we'll get to that next Sunday. Kyle, you'll be there with us. Get down. Come on. You got to give it a little more room to the right. Just one of them. But another one four pin, one for Tommy Jones that he missed in the fourth, and one now for A.J. Johnson. Good job, A.J. 
So AJ cleans that one up. Coming your way Wednesday over on FS1, America's team, the Tampa Bay Rays. What? Randy, a Rosarina. Yeah. The, they're in California. Wait. They're taking on the Angels. America's team. America's team. You know who's going to go see the Rays at the Angels tomorrow? You? Rays, man, they're awesome. 6.30 Eastern, 3.30 Pacific, FS1, Fox Sports app. I mean, you are a Tampa Bay guy, even though you live in Cali now. <laughs> you, are, you are correct, sir. Tommy Jones! Oh, that oh, messenger! Oh, got it on the oh. second bite! All right, so show me Kyle Troop, another 43-year-old that'll sling wood like that. I was going to say, that was a good messenger that for was, his age, yes. That was dirty. <laughs> Love you, Tommy. Oh, my goodness. Watch this. Uh, it on the way back. Yeah, off uh, of the wall. Two wall messenger, and then just tips it on the way by. You know what that's like? That's like getting in your Kia and driving down to the tournament and then going about an hour and realizing you didn't pack any of your bowling gear. Yeah, you forgot your jerseys in your pants, and I feel like I looked pretty good on the show today, guys. That was Kyle and Guppy Troop Guppy, yeah. this Guppy, week. Guppy forgets his glasses. I asked him if he wanted those. He said, nah, good. Uh, my favorite line from you during our Zoom calls is like, yeah, the, um, the uh, what is the, the turn signals are optional with Gup. <laughs> We're not going to talk about Gup's driving. So. Oh, boy. Way right of target. What is going on? Well, he made a ball change and moved in and then missed right. Good on this lane right now. Guess what? Tommy has to finish on that lane. Yeah, he went right back to the ball that he tried before, but yeah. just an errant shot. And, you know, that's the tough thing about when you make a ball change and then it just doesn't even get close to where you're wanting to place it, then yeah. it's, you know, it just sucks because it's just such a wasted frame, you know, because if he would have got a read off of that, but that one, and now a ball change on the spare here yep. as well. Yep. Tommy, strike, spare, strike, open frame, strike, spare. Did you, did you like that, though? I mean, it's been a little dicey the last couple shots. And he looks at another ball to try to get to the pocket. I would say that was a pretty good change. Johnson, Jones, we wrap up game number two of their semifinal showdown next. Always good to be back in this part of the country. Semifinal showdown number two here of the Kia PBA playoffs, match number two. Set for its conclusion and it is one A.J. Johnson. This man has to win to force a ninth and 10th frame roll off. The winner to take on our guest right now in the booth, Kyle Troop, to next Sunday in our championship oh, match. A.J. Johnson did not like it. Almost went Brooklyn. Good. Left and left. Those long commercial breaks sometimes sting you. Kyle, how much of this is the lane, lanes in the old pattern getting tricky versus just poor execution? Uh, I would definitely say this pair is very tricky. Uh, if you just take into consideration after your thing, two games on the right lane and one game on the left lane, and then Prather starting with a very right, strong ball from about 20 to start. Mm -hmm. I don't even really know where to tell you to play, you know, <laughs> to have a consistent ball reaction. Uh, and I think we can see that with, you know, the ball changes of the adjustments constantly thinking to have it to figure out the best way to the pocket on both of these lanes. Do you think straighter is greater? I, I definitely do. And that okay. was kind of part of, uh, you know, my game plan as well. Uh, the left lane, I felt like you could hook it more, but the right lane, I wanted to play straighter. You ready for next Sunday? Oh, I'm ready. I Man. love Jupiter. How, how do you describe your run through this, this playoffs in relation, as AJ gets another strike, in relation to how your season has gone? You know, uh, it feels really good because, uh, like I said, I struggled a lot in the beginning of the season throughout, but, uh, you know, never give up. You know, I've got a tattoo of that, you know, never quit. Uh, and, you know, it's proven, you know, I've worked hard, you know, trying to figure out the kinks in my game that was, you know, causing me to not be great as, you know, I am. But, you know, here we are. You know, we're still fighting and you know, we've got two more games or one more match mm -hmm. to go. And I, I want to be a tag team champion with Guppy, Rob. Coming for the belt. Love it, man. I love the video we showed it earlier of you handing the belt over to Gup and he's got around that tiny waist of his. Tommy Jones with the strike right here. And you talk about your resurgence here at the PBA playoffs. This whole season really has been a resurgence for Tommy Jones. Look at these top 10 finishes. Yeah. Third at the World Championship, fifth at the TOC. 
Fifth at the Players, sixth at the U.S. Open. Man. And remember, down at the bottom, zero times on television last season. I will say real quickly, uh, Tommy and I, we like to have some friendly dinner wagers sometimes, and uh, it ain't been working out too well for me. For you, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Tommy's been, Tommy's been eating well. <laughs> just, getting, just getting real close to the show. You know, feels good to see him bowling well here at the playoffs. Looking for his first double, game two. Oh! Not to be. What's, uh, what's Tommy's go-to order when he wants to stick it to the man who's paying? No, it's still going to be plain as all get out. <laughs> <Still> <laughs> nothing with any flavor. Just, you know, <laughs> burger, no sauce, no nothing. Steak, that's it. I will tell you that he did say earlier today that if it swims, he doesn't eat it. Yeah. <laughs> if it does a lot of things, he don't eat it. <laughs> Looked uh, out. Kicked it. Oh, boy. It has been a struggle. It has been a struggle for these two dudes. AC unit. Big money next week, Kyle. You know how to win the big money. Had a, had a good experience a few times last year. Uh, you know, just very thankful, you know, grateful that we get to bowl for this kind of money again. And, uh, you know, got to get a few bucks on the season before we're done. So, you know, we're going to do our best to get there. AJ to close out the eighth. Oh, man. <laughs> That would have helped a lot working on a strike. It could have increased his lead to 17. I mean, I was shaking my head that that was a good shot off his hand. Yep. And that's just a bad break at a bad time. But fortunately for him, he's still in the driver's seat of the match. Third frame, remember, he had an open frame. A fair shot. Takes care of the nine pin there to say, Jay. So the lead's at seven. We begin the foundation frame ninth. Right here, I think that's all you can ask for as a player. You know, he got a terrible break there, but, you know, if he steps back for one moment and looks at it, if he throws the next four strikes, he cannot be beat. So that's the way I look at it. If he steps up here, throws one in the ninth, anything less from Tommy, that's only less pressure that he will have to face in the tenth. That belt up for grabs next Sunday, 2 Eastern on Fox. We know, Kyle, you'll be there. The winner of this to take on Kyle Troop. Johnson trying to extend this semifinal showdown. That's not going to help. Stay up, dude. Stay up. Sounds like he probably just got a little bent just over too fast. Way. So he gets tipped early, which makes his swing steep, which makes him grab it at the bottom and pull left. Correct. And you could see that just left off of his Absolutely. hand. Look out. Missed it. Oh, no. Open frame. Ninth. You can't win matches at this level missing spares. Oh. It just never works out. Especially against Tommy Jones. You know, I've known Tommy for a long time, being a fellow Carolina native. And no matter how bad he's bowling, if he gets the chance to step up and win, I think my mind is going to be on Tommy here these next few frames. Well, the good news for Tommy is on the right lane, and he struck every shot on that right lane. The bad news is he has to finish on the left lane. He hasn't thrown a strike on that left lane this entire game, too. Yeah, three spares in an open frame on the left lane, but here he is in the right. And he does not get the strike. So the four pin. Keep going through the motions here, Tommy. You are done with the right lane after converting this four pin. Move. Hopefully, I guess there yeah, is a roll I mean, off. Hopefully. There's been no guarantees yeah. for either player when it comes to shooting spares here in game two. I mean, you are holding your breath today yeah. on these single pin yeah. spare conversions. So you have a 191, 197 max score. Right. So Tommy can step up here, throw two strikes and five pins, and shut out AJ Johnson. Right. But think about this if he. If Tommy makes a four pin in the fourth frame, he just ah. needs a mark and good count. That's why they say strikes are for show, spares make the dough. But here, Tommy needs two strikes for the show. So let's see what he's got. Now 
only did he not get the strike, he's oh got some God. heavy lifting to get a spare here in the tenth. Are you? I, I just, it's head scratching. I have no idea on the plane. Ugh. Obviously. Well, every shot thrown makes somebody happy, and I'll tell you what, AJ Johnson just took a big sigh of relief after watching that. He's back in this. Mm. Open One frame seven. to close. Still 7-2. Still forces a mark in the 10th from AJ, though. That was important there to at least get three pins. Strike or spare. And got ourselves a good old roll-off. Ninth and 10th frame Some, roll-off. Something be staring at us. Something you know nothing about in 2022 with PBA playoffs, Kyle. It's kind of the plan. Uh, you know, I wanted to keep it that way. Remember, two open frames this match alone, though, for A.J. Johnson. I think he likes this right lane, though, Rob. He does. He, yeah. Last time up, solid nine. Any mark will do. There's your mark. That ball shimmed nicely, didn't it? Very good shot there. It's two in a row on the right lane for him, so... If I was a betting man, you got to make a finish on the left leg. Yeah, Tommy's, Tommy's going to start on the left and he's going to finish on the right. Correct. And I think that's what it comes down to in the roll off situation, you know, deciding on who wants to start and who wants, who wants to finish it comes down to which lane is the better lane. You know, I don't think these players think about the pressure of I've got to finish second or I'm going to finish first. In a crucial spot like this, you have to want to finish on the better lane for yourself if yep. you have the option. Tommy J so here they are, roll off time. The winner moves on to the final to ninth and 10th. We mentioned the higher seed chooses the order, so that will be Tommy. Still tied, we're going to a one ball roll off. And just like we predicted, Kyle, Tommy's gonna to start on that left lane. A veteran move right there, Randy. And going back to the ghost. Or maybe, to death. maybe not. <laughs> yep. A little sandpaper to rough up that thumb hole for Tommy Jones. It's a great shot of the Black Widow ghost right there on the hip. <laughs> you just like saying ghost. Like he moved in and banged on that one. I mean, Randy, you know, like I said, it comes down to the roll off. And I think Tommy is one of the toughest guys to beat when it comes down to just needing the shot. And he's, you're correct, he moved a little further left, hit on it, probably gave it as much as he had, and <laughs> it ran the over, ran the A pin over. And now pressure right onto AJ. I'm sorry, called what pin? What pin did it run over? <laughs> that pin to the left of the nine. There you go. Looks good. Yeah, it is good. Matching strikes. Again, AJ Johnson yet to win on the PBA Tour. Eighth year on the circuit. Six times a runner up. Kyle, best player not to win? I think I would have to agree with you, Randy. Okay. I think he's kind of earned that title now. It is a title he would like to shed. Exactly. It's not one you want. So he slides over to the left lane. It was so good. I thought that was a pretty good shot. Yeah, it looked good, and then all of a sudden it, so good. it turned the left turn signal on and went right through the face. He has draw, to forget it. it. He has to forget about that, though, because he can still convert this spare. This okay. is a fairly easy converted split. Missed it. Oh, wow. Are you not oh. 
So 28. Okay. Here we go with the tape, Randy. Yeah, and it didn't work yeah, out for him last time. Well, but that was, that was a, on the spare ball. Spare ball. Correct. Obviously, I don't use tape. I don't use a thumb, but <laughs> I, I respect no, the players that can do this in such a crucial situation to be able to yeah, change man. the feel of your thumb hole. Props to them guys. They're the professionals at that. I mean, for me, the, the player that <sighs> fidgeted more with his thumb than any player in the history of the PBA Tour is Norm Duke, Norm and Duke. we all know how great he is. Oh, any it? mark, and, and Tommy Jones is going to take you on next week, Kyle. <sighs> next weekend, I should say. He is, especially in roll offs. Go get him, out. A win's a win, boys. That is your satisfying moment of the match, sponsored by Snickers. Nothing satisfies like a Snickers. Nothing satisfies like moving on to the championship match. Tommy Jones does it in roll off fashion over AJ Johnson. What a crazy match. Your, your thoughts real quick, Kyle, on taking on Tommy Jones next weekend? Oh, let's do it. Uh, I mean, I've known him for a long time. He better make his spares next week. He's going to be for a <laughs> world it. of hurt. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. Great. Let's update that bracket. Yeah, next Sunday, we are going to crown a champ right here from Bolero, Jupiter in Jupiter, Florida. Nine seed, Kyle Troop. Six seed, Tommy Jones. 100K on the line here. Live coverage on Fox at 2 p.m. You got both picks with you for next weekend? Double pick it is. Double pick it. Hey, give me a triple pick. Triple pick next week, maybe. <laughs> Love it. PBA playoffs. Championship coverage live next Sunday here on Fox. Tommy Jones, the Hall of Famer, set to take on Kyle Troop. We'll see you next weekend. And hey, happy Mother's Day out there to all the great bowling moms watching.